Johanna F. Ross believes in monistic idealism. This entails that everything is immaterial. He also believes that all is mind. This has as a necessary consequence that the mind is fundamental and that the material or the illusion of the material is derived from the mental. I want to offer six arguments that decisively refute the Rothschild paradigm. The first argument for why the mind is not and cannot be fundamental is that the mind is that which belongs to a person. We know this linguistically. We don't say that mind. We say my mind. When we speak of the mind, we say the mind of the married man or the mind of Mozart or the mind of Napoleon. The reason the mind is that which belongs to a person is that the mind is an action or faculty that thus requires an agent that acts or uses that faculty. Thus the mind cannot be fundamental since that which is fundamental cannot be simply a property or faculty of something else. The second argument is inductive. To take a cue from Stephen C. Meyer, all our uniform and repeated experience empirically verifies that the mind never exists independently in reality, but is always the property of some material substrate, namely humans and maybe some higher order animals. That which does not exist independently in reality is not fundamental. The third argument is that the mind cannot be fundamental since immaterial phenomena have no cause or agency on their own. The only way an immaterial phenomenon can have cause or agency is if it is entailed and inheres in the physical, inheriting the causal powers that only the physical possesses. And this is confirmed by reality, as I am not aware of a single example in reality of an immaterial thing or phenomenon existing independently in reality that has causal agency. That which does not have causal agency cannot be fundamental since it does not even have the ability to do anything on its very own or be the foundational ground from which everything else is derived or caused by. The fourth argument is that the material is fundamental because causation is necessarily temporal and spatial. In order to cause, a thing must cause somewhere, which entails a location of some sort. And in order to cause, a thing must change, since causation is a change from cause to effect, and change is temporal. Thus the immaterial cannot be fundamental and be that which causes the physical, since the immaterial on its own does not entail space and time, which is essential for causation. The fifth argument I would like to offer for why the mind cannot be fundamental is that in order to cause a thing or entity or phenomenon must have parts or a mechanism to carry the causative instantiation out. Immaterial phenomena have no parts or mechanisms to carry out causation since they are immaterial and thus are abstract. And abstractions or immaterial phenomena have no parts or mechanisms by their very nature of being immaterial or abstract. And the sixth argument I would like to offer for why the mind cannot be fundamental is that in order to exist, a thing or entity must be bounded, since that which has no boundary but is said to exist entails an actualized infinity. Actualized infinities cannot exist in reality since actualized infinities are a logical contradiction. Thus all things that exist in reality are bounded and to be bounded entails a finite extension and boundary and thus entails a concrete exemplification as material things are bounded by their physical embodiment as concrete objects. This is why we understand in philosophy that concrete things exist in reality, while concepts or abstractions do not exist in reality as such. And the phrase as such there means in and of themselves. That which does not exist in reality as such cannot be fundamental 
since reality is that which is fundamental metaphysically.